Beck deal. You know, we've been playing real well on the West Coast. We've been searching for our own identity for Gonzaga University. You know, we're not the best airport team. You know, we don't we don't look that good uh, in warming up and st in that. So uh, looking at us and then seeing the name on the jersey, people, uh, you know, I would imagine have a tendency to kind of overlook us or not take us so seriously. Gonzaga University will always be a special place for me. Um, and it's a special place with special people. It touched my heart, it touched me. This place is, is, is part of my life. There's nothing else like it. You guys come back for a reason because it's a special place. I couldn't have, you know, chosen uh, a better place to be. It's been like a family environment, you know, the guys that I hung, hung out with, the coaches, I mean, it's just a great atmosphere. And I think that's why they're winners. And they'll continue to win because the way how they embrace people and the way they embrace the players. You know, they make it all seem like it's a family. Not just about an individual, but more so a family first. Well, there's no question history has been made in Spokane this year as the tradition takes the next step forward. The Gonzaga Bulldogs have advanced to the Final Four for the first time in school history. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Vigil. And I'm Sam Adams live in Glendale, Arizona, where we have a Final Four we were hoping for, we just thought we may never see. And we've got our team not only back home in Spokane, but we're making Glendale our second home. We have coverage all week long right here in Glendale and also in Spokane. And as I mentioned, we didn't really think this Final Four would come together. Well, nobody really thought so. If you look at the data, it's pretty much unbelievable. ESPN's tournament challenge, 18.8 million brackets filled out, only 657, or if you do the math, 0.003% correctly picked all four of those Final Four teams, Gonzaga, North Carolina, Oregon, and South Carolina. Doesn't stop there. Of course, check this out. According to the ESPN analytics site 538.com, the Zags are favored to win their matchup against the South Carolina Gamecocks, favored by 69%. Yeah, and as far as the entire tournament goes, the Zags also favored to take home the entire championship. Can you believe that? 42% win probability right behind them, if you can believe it. North Carolina behind Gonzaga, 24% chance. Then Oregon, South Carolina rounding out your bracket. Unbelievable. All right, let's take a look at how the Zags got to this point in their historical season. Drawing a one seed out of the West, the team started out the tournament, of course, against a 16 seeded South Dakota State Jackrabbits. While the Zags were admittedly a little slow out of the gates, they soon found their footing and cruised to a 66 46 victory, holding the Jackrabbits to just 24 points in the second half. From there, the Zags advanced to take on eight seeded Northwestern, who had just defeated Vanderbilt in their first round thriller. That was also the first NCAA appearance in school history. Now, the Zags jumped out on the Wildcats early, but Northwestern and closed the gap in the second half. After a controversial call and a technical foul called on the Wildcats, the Zags were able to overcome a serious momentum swing and a heavy Northwestern fan presence to defeat the Wildcats 73-79. to uh, and from there, the Zags off to San Jose, a date with West Virginia, the Mountaineers. That, of course, was a Sweet 16. That game was back and forth pretty much for the entire stretch. And then in the final seconds, remember, Jordan Matthews, maybe one of the shot, best shots in Gonzaga history, certainly one of the biggest. Clutch three, putting the game out of reach, Gonzaga winning 61-58. Then on uh, for that historic matchup. The only question was for which team. Neither Gonzaga nor Xavier had ever made it to a Final Four. One team was finally, I'm going to use the term, going to get the monkey off their back. The Bulldogs came out after making it clear this time uh, was their year. Gonzaga dominated the game from start to finish, cruising to the win, 83-59, punching their trip to Phoenix and now a first-ever Final Four. Now, in order to get to a national championship game here in Glendale in the Final Four, well, of course, first they have to get through the Gamecocks mm -hmm. of South Carolina, a team which had a rough end of the year, dropping six of its last nine in the regular season. Uh, but once they were in the tournament, different story, tale of two teams, if you will. South Carolina with a hot streak throughout the tournament, making 
Uh, sure, it was a very entertaining matchup. Uh, but to get a better of idea how the Zags would fare heading into this game, we decided to turn it over to the experts, Steph. Well, who better would know? I sat down earlier today with Gonzaga alum Casey Calvary, Matt Santangelo, and Mike Nielsen to see what they thought about the Zags' chances heading into this weekend's game as the school celebrates its first ever trip to the Final Four. My first question to you is, how exciting is this? Uh, I think it's almost unreal for me still. Like, I, I think I'll probably recognize the significance of it years down the road, mm -hmm. uh, especially as all the old guys, old teammates, uh, are flying from across the country to come watch this game, and you start to get a sense for this is another level that this team has taken the program to. They just seem more comfortable in their own skin mm -hmm. than, you know, maybe the previous groups are that have been to this, you know, the last time we were number one, last time we were number one seed. This group, you know, we want to make a Final Four. We want to win a national mm -hmm. championship. Um, you know, just a lot more ownership with this particular group uh, of what that success looks like for them. And then they went out and backed it up with, with yeah. you know, obviously tremendous play. You know, I know a lot of guys play sometimes with that anger. They want that chip because it actually helps to motivate them. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at three of them. You think that's what these guys are doing too? I think so. Uh, you know, for us, I think, you know, our generation, some of us felt like, you know, we, maybe we could have been recruited higher or, you know, could have, we got snubbed one way or the other. I think these guys, all year long, they haven't gotten credit. You know, they're the weakest number one seed. Nobody wanted to vote them, you know, number one overall. Um, lots of disrespect for them as players, for the conference that we play in, and they've really, you know, had a chip on their shoulder um, um, that way. And, and I think they've played tough because of it. What type of advice would you give them if you were out there, you know, giving them their pep talk right before the game? What is it that you would say to them? I live in the moment, I suppose. You know, don't be afraid of taking the big shot, stepping up, um, and just be who you are. All they have to do is come out and be the team that they've been all year long. They just have to go out and execute, like they said, be themselves. But they've been doing that for so long now right. that it's, you're not asking them to do <laughs> anything above and beyond. And I think for this team, you know, if you are yourself and you play your game and you lose, you can look in the mirror and be okay with that. It's when you try and do something else and then you fail and you're like, wow, you know, and I think their best is going to be good enough. It's going to take them to where they need to be. So I have all the confidence in the world. Yeah, they have so much confidence. They are actually, some of them road tripping down to the Final Four. Some of them are flying, but like 25, 30 former players are getting wow. together. Yeah, to head down there. <laughs> some from as far away as uh, Europe. Sam? Wow, amazing. And you, you talk about the, the chances Gonzaga has of performing very well here. We heard from former players. How about the coaches of both these programs? They both took a teleconference. Today we heard from head coach Mark Few and Frank Martin from South Carolina as well. All four of these teams have shown their ferocious competitors, you know, to, to, to get themselves through the regular season and in the tournament and then you know, to just survive and, and be successful, you know, for four games in the NCAA tournament. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's about who's going who's gonna to play the best for those 40 minutes. All right, now, you want to know, if you're coming down here to Phoenix, Arizona, you're coming down to the Glendale area, you're probably going to want to get a lay of the land as far as what to do here from Spokane when you come here to Arizona. We finally made it to Phoenix, Arizona, the home of this year's Final Four, where we all know the Gonzaga Bulldogs will arrive in just a few days. But before they do, I wanted to take you around, show you some of the sights to see here in my hometown. One of my favorite things to do when I come home is to go for a hike. Arizona is home to countless hiking trails for all levels. My favorite and one of the most famous is Camelback Mountain. Just up the road is Scottsdale Fashion Square, a mall people come from all over to visit. If you're looking to shop, this is your place. Next up is Old Town Scottsdale. From its historic restaurants to its rich culture, Old Town is sure worth spending the day walking around. Spring training games are also a main attraction this time of year in Phoenix, with 10 different stadiums. And yes, the Mariners are included. And something you'll find a lot of here in Arizona, a saguaro cactus. And take a look, this one's actually taller than Shemek Karnowski. That's it here in Phoenix today. We'll continue to bring you coverage throughout the week leading up to game day on Saturday. Reporting in Phoenix, Arizona, Morgan Warham.
Back to you. All right, we still have much more ahead here tonight on our special drive for the title coverage. Senior Gonzaga guard Jordan Matthews is in the studio. We're going to sit down with him in just a bit, but we're going to check in with Patrick Erickson on how Final Four fever has taken over Phoenix. Stay with us. Number four, don't forget it. Because here he is right here in our studio. How you doing? I'm good. Thank How was you for practice today? Thanks for being uh, here. It was all right. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> You're so humble. Yeah, it was like if it was bad, I wouldn't be able to say or else Coach Few would say Ooh. something about it. So oh, I'll only say it was pretty easy. How's the team feeling right now? Everybody's really excited. Um elated to be in the final four, but we know our work's not done yet yeah. and we have a great challenge in South Carolina coming up. Kind of back to business. Your number four, is there any special reason? Does that have any meaning to you? Um, I'm one of four kids. I used to wear four because my brother wore it, uh -huh. but he switched to two and I just chose four because he used to wear it and we always switched and wear each other's numbers, so it's my turn to wear his. Oh, that's neat. And your brother was in the tournament a while back. He plays for USC. Yep. Were you watching every game, I'm yeah, sure? Yeah, I watched all the games. I was stressed out. Me and my mom and dad were all hoarse in Salt Lake City because we were yelling at the TV so long. Oh, my God. His gosh. game against um, SMU, we were like yelling in the hotel mob. It was like, like you were playing two games. Right. You're playing his game and you're playing right. your I game as well. Right, I had to get ready well. for mine. I was like yelling and throwing Gator at the TV. It was normal. <laughs> it was normal. It was well, normal. we all know you um, came here as a transfer. Uh, you didn't just inherit Sp uh, Gonzaga. You inherited a Spokane community. How, how does it feel to be in a town where literally everyone knows your name? Yeah, it feels amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. um, just the support everybody gives you everywhere you go. Um, it's it's something of a give and take like we do all this for the community and to see the support they give us is special well i tell you what was special was seeing you just win that game for us it was amazing jordan matthews was all over every possible newscast around the nation where'd you learn how to shoot like that my dad your dad yeah, taught you yeah we used to get up at, at uh five when we were living in nebraska and we go to the ymca and shoot and we've always just shot 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 and to the basics and it's been great well a viewer asked you uh asked me to ask you uh what age did you start playing I was like two and a half, three. About two. Around the same time Teletubbies happened, you're I was right. just starting. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you were on Teletubbies. Well, you're on Teletubbies now. Every Monday when I overeat, I feel like a Teletubby. So you're on, <laughs> on the second show of Teletubbies. Right. So you, you've been making some faces on and off the court that people have really been grabbing onto. Take a look at your uh, teammates. I don't know if you've seen them making the uh, Jordan Matthews no, face or not. We can roll that. <laughs> What do you call that face? It just felt natural. I didn't want to celebrate too long because the game wasn't over. Is that, that is that really the, the... That was a you, good one. Ryan did a good one. Too. When you and your brother go up against each other, do you make that face? We're not allowed to go up against each other anymore. When oh, we were, yeah. when we did, we were like, we stopped when we were six, but that's when celebrations would happen. Like, he would owe me his dinner, so I'd take it from him. That is something so like awesome. that. So. Um, it was fun. So your family is uh, going to the game, but you're still in need of three tickets. Jordan Matthews can't even get tickets to his own game. That's crazy. So who's all coming to the game? Mom, uh -huh. dad, sisters, brother, grandmother, uh, girlfriend, godparents. That is mm -hmm. so cool. Um, how do you, at this point, shut down social media? Shut down all the naysayers. I mean, at some point, you've got to get that out of your head and start thinking about the, the game. How are you going to do that? Yeah, same as I've done all season, and same as all of us have done all season, we kind of just hang out with each other, turn our phones off if we need to, and just lock in on the opponent at hand. I mean, it's going to be a good South Carolina team, and we're really excited for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not something we're looking past or always looking for our tickets. We're excited we're in the Final Four, but it's also a business trip for us. Yeah, you know, a couple of former players came by, and they had some well wishes for you. I want to play that right now so you could see it. Oh. Here it comes. Good luck, Jordan. Let it fly. <laughs> Jordan, just go be you. That's all you got to do. Bring the edge and bring the chip uh, and let it fly. You've only been here one year, but you're a Zag. You're part of the brotherhood. And uh, thanks for leaving the jersey better than you found it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for making time. You know what's awesome is don't ever forget where you came from, but don't ever forget where you've been. You've made a huge impact on our community and the Gonzaga community, and we will never forget that. Oh, thanks. That community has a huge impact on me as well. Good to have you here. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back tonight. Thousands of fans flocking to the desert ahead of this weekend's big game. 
They're not the only ones, though. They're preparing for the tournament. Patrick Erickson's already in Phoenix, and he has found out today that local shops are making sure they have the gear that everybody wants. Well, if you are making the trip to Phoenix for the Final Four, we want to come along for your ride. Send us pictures and videos using the hashtag GUFinal4. We'll be back after this. First, we had Jordan Matthews and now President Thane McCullough. Good to have you here tonight. Nice to see you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Yeah, Are you pleasure. just so excited about this run? This is so much fun. I just have to ask, do you think God is listening to our prayers? I think God's always listening to our <laughs> prayers. I, I think this is just a remarkable, remarkable team, remarkable season for us, and we're just so grateful. Oh, you have been doing a lot of tweeting. I see on Twitter quite a bit. Uh, has it been fun? It has been. Oh, it's been great. So amazing. You're a tall guy. Did you play basketball? Little little ball in high school. Little ball in high school? N not real well. But not like they play? Uh, not at all. <laughs> um, do you have any pregame rituals before you go? Oh, geez. You know, um, I don't. I really try to just be in the moment, focus in on on how the, the crowd is and how the players are. And it is true that when we get to championship time, mm -hmm. I uh, tend to wear one of my championship rings as good luck. And I was doing that this uh, this last week in San Jose. That's so exciting. But it's, uh, no, it's really an opportunity to just be with them and to celebrate. It's so exciting even covering this for us. We have been with Gonzaga the whole way through and a lot of their players living in Spokane. You know, Spokane is a community. Unlike, say, where Jordan went to school in Berkeley, there's a Stanford, there's a USF. What would you like to say to the folks at home who are loyal, loyal fans to yeah. Gonzaga? Oh, we are, we are so grateful for everything that Spokane uh, has been for us, for the way that we have been together on this journey. And uh, Gonzaga does not, uh, for a moment, take for granted the success as being yeah. its own exclusively. Uh, we would not be where we are today Very without humble. Spokane. Well, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate thank it. You. We'll take a quick break and be right back. <clears throat> Welcome back. Sam Adams live here in Glendale, Arizona, inviting you to stay with us throughout the week. Have so much going on. For example, tomorrow we're going to hit spring training with the Seattle Mariners here from about Gonzaga, and we're going to ride in a helicopter to get a bird's eye view. Steph, a lot to get to. We'll see you in a little bit.